I am pleased to inform you that ISR College of Pharmacy is organizing an expert talk series, and one of our, our experts are joined, Dr. Vijay Kumar from Dhyanand Sagar University. So, Dr. Vijay Kumar is working as an associate professor in Dhyanand Sagar University, Bangalore. He has completed the Farm and PhD in Pharmacology. His expertise in the pharmacology and various animal models in various diseases, as well as the alternative to animal research. So, I am welcome you, sir, in ISR College of Pharmacy, Moga. And uh, uh, you can continue with your presentation, sir. Uh, you can change your screen, sir, please. Thank you, sir. Thank you for the introduction. Shall I share my screen? Yes, sir. My slides are uh, visible. Yes, sir, your slide is completely visible, sir. Yes. So please start with the link. Okay. So thank you once again, Dr. Bilpreet, uh, for your uh, kind invitation to share something about uh, alternatives and uh, animal testing. So it is AT versus uh, double AT, alternatives, uh, animal testing, and uh, alternatives to animal testing. So now the era is uh, we are shifting from animal testing to alternatives to animal testing. But uh, a decade before we were struggling with a lot of animal models. So which animal model is better uh, to proceed with uh, which, disease, which uh, disease or which disorder to study and all. Uh, during these developments, so in this particular decade, there is a lot of interest and uh, you know, a uh, lot of uh, motivation am among the researchers to shift themselves to alternatives to animal testing. So if you see, so why we need uh, animal experimentation in the biomedical research? What is the root cause and why we have to consider the animal studies? So first of all, to satisfy the scientific query. So if at all, if you see in our own pharmaceutical sciences field, so whether it is medicinal chemistry, whether it is pharmaceutics, whether it is pharmacognosy or any other uh, department. So to satisfy the scientific query at last. So what is the at the end to give a conclusion, right? So whether the formulation is fine or else whether the synthesized compound is fine or uh, whether the isolated compound is fine. So at last we will be, ourselves will be satisfied. Even, even you know that uh, to publish a good paper, we feel that yes, animal studies uh, should be included to publish a good paper and all. So at the end, we will be in a position to tell that whether animal studies are must for a good paper or not. Then as a model to study human anatomy and physiology. So to study the human anatomy and physiology, we know the similarities uh, of these particular uh, rodent models and all towards the humans. So that is the reason we have selected these models. So not only to uh, bring out any outcome of the research, so but uh, also to study the anatomy and physiology, and to as a model to study any disease, any particular disease. So we have um, Mr. Rats, we have Sprog Dali, so we have uh, Mongolian gerbils, we have uh, beagles, right? So each and every animal model has its own uh, uh, speciality to study in some diseases then to develop test and uh, potential forms of treatment right so based on these animal models we will be testing the chemicals or else any other uh, formulations or nanoparticles or synthetic compounds right so to develop a test the, the test is developed based on the animal model which we are selecting then to protect the safety of the people animals and environment this this sentence is not completely justified but the thing is uh, yes, so to protect us from different diseases, so to, we need uh, some sort of medicines, right? So those things are uh, research outcomes, so based on the animal studies. So the, the, these are the few uh, statements which will be very clear why the animal experiments are 
are required. So as I told that we have a lot of animal models. Because I don't know uh, in our uh, pharmacy colleges and medical colleges, we may not be using a uh, lot of models. The familiar models for us are so rats, mice, and uh, guinea pigs, at most rabbits. I don't think so gerbils, Mongolian gerbils, and um, beagles, right? Monkeys, we are not so uh, uh, savvy so to use in our labs. So for that, we will be going to the specialized lab where the veterinary pharmacology is well developed. So, but the thing is, these are all the different animal models. So when I'm working, when I'm uh, was in the training in National Institute of Nutrition, ICMR N9 in Hyderabad, I got an opportunity to uh, work with the Mongolian gerbils and uh, with the, be, uh, to just observe, so participate in the uh, research of monkeys and beetle dogs. So, with that background, so we need to, we know, every one of us know, so what is the drug discovery cycle and how it goes. So, in the drug discovery cycles, we will have one research question. So, based on that, we will formulate some sort of objectives. So based on that, we will find out the leads, right? So whatever the uh, origin of that lead might be. So then we will go and we will just uh, try to test, right, on the animals. Then based on that, we will try to modify the formulation or the synthetic compound once you take. So we will just try to, uh, once one, one animal study is done, so you have to go to the next level. So what you will do, so whatever the molecule is there, so whatever the substituents are there, you are keep on trying that and again coming for the second line of the study so like that we will be uh, changing the formulation strategy scale up strategies and all and uh, up with the background of this particular animal studies so any company or the research organization or any uh, cro's or whatever it is so they will uh, go for the ind applications with fda right so this is the crucial step when without uh, animal studies so without the uh, viable data so which is done on the animals so you cannot go for the INDs, right? So then you will proceed with the clinical studies. So then the drug candidate will be come to the market. Now, if you see the history, one FDA approved drug, you can see the figure at last it is towards my right side. So it is there one FDA approved drug, but the drug discovery starts. So in the synthetic chemistry labs by 10,000 compounds. So from there, so it will be selected. So 250, so from that, it, it will take a lot of time. So from that, again, it will come to the clinical at last. So you will be having one drug. Now, here we need to think about my title, that is animal testing versus alternatives to animal testing. So means 10,000 compounds are there. So I don't know after filtration, how many compounds are going for animal uh, studies and only one compound is uh, getting an approval of FDA. Then what is the justification of using so and so many animals is there any other method to minimize this so this is the uh, glitch this is the main line where we have to think and we have to go with this particular animal studies. now if you see the history of animal testing and alternatives in one slide right so if you see from uh, 600 to 200 bc so Akmeron. So first he used these particular things to study the anatomy and physiology. So starting from uh, uh, Akmeron, Aristotle and Galen. So once once uh, it reached to 300 to 200 uh, BC, uh, dissection techniques and vivisection of animals has started by Galen. Right. So after that, it has taken to the 16th century again. So coming to William Harvey. So where he started the scientific progress of the same thing. Then uh, coming to the uh, 18th century. So where you have a lot of functions to know the functions of different organs. So then coming to the 19th century. Now, 20th century is the one where anti-VV section, anti-dissections and all is started. Then after that, so there is a campaign started by Russell and Bush, right? So humane experimental techniques means refinement of the animal studies, refinement of the surgical techniques, refinement of the handling of the animals, whatever it is, it has been started from 20th century so this is how the uh, history if you can see how it started and from where uh, what is the contribution of different scientists and different uh, time periods and at the 20th century it the uh, humane experimental technique that is the seed first of all they thought about the animals why animal testing became important in the 20th century again 
so if you see the taste of death and elixir sulfonamide incident every one of us know so every one of us know what is the elixir sulfonamide uh, uh, incident which has happened right in 1937 and uh, the same way thalidomide disaster also so we know because it was just a uh, uh, to uh, food and drug ingredients because of that uh, safety studies was not mandatory at that particular time so because of that uh, so there is pneumonia and blood poisoning and meningitis due to the chemicals used so more than 100% died so why that that is there because the whole and sole reason was usfd identified that diethylene glycol so was the solvent used in that particular formulation and safety studies was not proper so definitely that is the whole and sole reason so there there should be more and more stringent and diligent methods which are required to proceed with these particular studies then there is a new law given by fda greater power to monitor the safety and efficacy of the drug so after in the first century there was not safety only we were uh, seeing only efficacy of the drugs then after that G gilling and canon so they have came up with the principles of drug testing before trials of the in the humans so they they led lot of principles so principles of drug testing prior to the trials in the human defined by 1938 in gallen and canon where the exact composition of drug should be known if not method of preparation so what is the composition is giving to the animals and what is the method of preparation so for example if you have paracetamol yes paracetamol is good so antipyretic and uh, okay maybe it, it will be used in pain management etc and etc but what is the method of preparation in due course of method of preparation what and what and all the chemicals you are using so which may show its impact on the body more than the paracetamol this is just an example i am taking so that is why we should be uh, very aware of the composition of the drug and also the method of preparation and acute toxicity of animals in different species is required acute toxicity chronic toxicity of the animals once acute toxicity is done then again chronic toxicity of the dr drugs also has to be done so then only the efficacy and safety studies will be fulfilled and it should be careful and frequent observations to develop the composite picture of clinic uh, clinical effects so once based on this so there should be a, a composite picture you need to know so which are the organs are damaging so what is the uh, timeline of that so in, in acute toxicity what are the different uh, parameters assessed and chronic toxicity what are the different parameters assessed and uh, what is the uh effect in the acute and what is the effect in the chronic so and uh, both the uh, pathological examination of tissues has to be taken into consideration so then comes again the urpk and P pkpd parameters like rate of absorption elimination excretion and also the drug concentration uh, which is there and possible influence on other drugs foods all these things has to be listed and this principle has to be kept in mind of the scientists uh, whenever they are going for the animal studies that careful examination for any idiosyncrasies or untoward reactions also be uh, has to be done and uh, well written and the document or blueprint of those things has to be maintained so these are the this one so this is how uh, you can see the thalidomide uh, disaster so because of the drug at that point of time we considered it as a wonder drug but after the 10000 children in 46 different countries has uh, paid the cost of this particular uh, research after this In 1960s, so there is a rise of alternative concept. What is the alternative for this? So animals are going, but uh, there is no proper outcome. We are what and all done is repeatedly. It is uh, uh, the the repetition of the same thing is happening. But the thing is, what is the productive outcome of it? If if not uh, any alternative is there, right? With the rise of animal testing in the midst of uh, 20th century, there was a simultaneous increase. in the protest of animal production right there are two views abolitionist and welfareist abolitionist and welfareist believing that animal experiments are ethically wrong as well as misleading so this is if you see our uh, iac institutional ethics committee so they will have we have lot of people in that so group of people so socially aware nominee scientist from orchard institute uh, so and uh, the member secretary etc etc so most of the things only social labor nominee will be thinking that animal studies are not in proper way you are not ethically correct so there should be uh, a method or there should be a proposal to think about the welfare of the animals and all then welfareist trying to improve the conditions and treatment of experimental 
animals so whatever the uh, animals studies are there so we are trying to refine the methods right we are trying to uh, do for some painless surgery so we are trying to refine alternative uh, concepts and uh, more and more refined methods so, so for example lagendorf is there now we have biopack so now physiography is there so we have uh, yeah. invasive to non invasive techniques are well developed today right so if you can see that uh, see this particular uh, this one if you can see all these days we were using means now also we are, we are using in animal studies also the same thing we are using petrol vehicles so now electric vehicles came why but if you see the efficiency uh, things so petrol vehicles whatever we are using are more and more efficient if you can uh, see now but electric vehicles the speed or the pickup and all that but it is eco friendly environment friendly in the same way with that particular thing only so we are keeping the lives of animals in the point of view going eco friendly and we are shifting ourselves to this now what are all the different uh, views on uh, those who oppose animal studies and those who favor the animal studies right so benefit to humans does not justify to harm to the animals so this is the viewpoint uh, those who are opposing the animal studies so it is just not just like uh, for our survival right so we are just uh, sacrificing lot of animals animals are inferior to human and very different uh, from them hence results from the animals cannot be applied on the humans right drugs that pass animal test are not necessarily safe and effective lot of times uh, we are seeing so those who are uh, doing high end researches they can see that whatever the results are there in animals may not be reproduced animals used in experiments are not protected by animal welfare act in uh, if there is any misleading in the following the ethical principles these things will happen and most of experiments involve animals are flawed wasting the lives of animal subjects right so lack of expertise people who are lack of expertise so come and handle the animals and do the studies under uh, uh, without any supervision of experts so these things will be happened so this is the view points of the uh, people who are talking on the opposite side of the animal and medical breakthrough involving animal research may still have been made without using animals i think uh, this is a debatable topic so breakthrough research can happen still without using animals so now now in this particular last 5 to 10 years so it rises to due with uh, a lot of other models than the animals so yes breakthrough can be definitely possible and religious traditions tells us more merciful to animals so we should not cause them suffering so this is the one of the uh, point again those who are uh, opposite to animal studies means they will think only one thing that they have life as we have so that is why for us so we should not sacrifice them and those who are favor animal studies experiments or animals are necessary to advance medical and biological knowledge animal testing contributes many life saving cures and treatments so we believe because those who are into research definitely we will be optimistic like my compound is going to perform well so my study might be going to perform well so like that there is no adequate alternatives on a living whole body system yes this is has to be considered but yes uh, there is no adequate alternative but the thing is the uh, alternative to animal testing field is growing day by day so who we have to hope one day there will be a perfect alternative with uh, minimal errors animal must used in cases when ethical consideration prevents uh, use of human subjects so, so animals themselves benefit from the results of animal testing relatively few animals are used in the research which is small price to pay the advances of the medical progress religious traditions allows human dominion over animals but uh, overall this thing is pros and cons are there but the thing is there are some studies where we cannot uh, uh, fulfill with the alternatives so we have to go to animal studies but researchers uh, who are mainly veterinary pharmacology is developing and laboratory animal scientist association is working a lot to come up with this so this is one of the articles uh, humans and animals would be still dying from rabies if pasteur hasn't experimented with dogs so this is one of the point which supports the uh, research in animals so if you can see so based on all these things why we have to do animal studies and all so you know triple r three r's right so this is the concept this is the main 3r campaign started by russell and bush right to in the favor of animal studies and also in the favor of life of animals so where 3r became the central theme of growing animal protection movement uh, so what this 3r tells us 
so replace reduce and refine if at all there is a chance to replace replace the animal with either non animal methods or any less developed animal species reduced animal use by decreasing the number of animals so this is the reduction of the animal number we will be uh, experiencing in iaac is like committee always suggests students that uh, why can't you use less animals so if there is any possibility you try to decrease the animals and all this is in line with this rs concept only then refinement so refine animal use by lessening or eliminating the pain or distress, distress. so if at all there is no chance of replacement try to reduce the number if there is no try uh, if there is no possible reduction then you need to try to refinement of the processor whatever you are following so if you can see the according to fda 9 out of 10 drugs deemed to be successful in animal studies again validity of the animal studies is often assumed rather than proven so they are demanding cost and time definitely validation requires more and more reproducible, reproducible results so you need to invest more and more time cost right so there is growing acceptance that non animal research methods are advanced techniques having potential improving the scientific progress and fewer demands of time and finance yeah in uh, some areas of research definitely there there are some some sort of models which are proving their point yes other than animal studies so there are strong uh, research data can be obtained so by using non animal methods also so if you can see so this is the recent uh, thing which i have come across like uh, elimination of the mammal testing by 2035 right so i don't know how far it will be possible and also the netherlands sees 2025 as first year without regulatory animal experiments so the report was launched in 15 december but still so they are struggling with this so i don't know in 2025 uh they will be fulfilling this point or not so this is uh, since i am as ipcsc a nominee so we know that so whenever we go for trainings and all so this is the thing we see so what is the animals feeling right so we don't smoke we don't drive we don't wear make uh, we don't wear makeup or perfume we don't use paint we don't drink alcohol we don't drop bombs we don't take drugs just because you do why do we suffer so this is the overall point of view this paragraph tells us welfare of the animals are very important we won't think all those things so we are thinking that i have we, we have lot of disorders lot of disorders are because of the life lifestyle modifications of ourselves so our life lifestyles uh, modifications our life leading method is not proper so right because of our own mistakes we are putting the animals and cost so for research and we are claiming that uh, this is breakthrough research etc etc and all now if you can see alternatives to animal testing if you have mainly human cell and tissue cultures clinical uh, studies like uh, based means to get some data you need to have some epidemiological studies atop autopsy post mortem studies you can do with some sort of uh, uh, any other tissue engineering techniques right mathematical models and computational simulations are there right non invasive imaging techniques are also there and uh, lower vertebrates you can use and alternatives in education you can use right so if you can see the methodology is routinely used at preliminary screening of drug molecules to check the toxicity and efficacy right based on the cell lines like cell line studies are emerging right now again right to study their mechanical action molecular levels so there are uh, uh, from sigma from other things and all so we are getting the strains of that different cell lines are available right the uh, that's why the research is shifting from intact animal the whole animal model to the cell lines tissues right so all those things if you can see this is one of the examples ap skin so where there is a uh, in vivo skin irritation test corrosion test what we will do on the animal so we can do with the ap skin so epiderm so this i came across uh, from one of the presentation of my colleagues so where the, the skin cells are there and collagen gel it is formulated then then it it will try to grow and based on that we will take that and we will use it for the skin irritation test so for toxic test by different microplate assays so other than using skins and all right clinical studies also can be done by non invasive techniques behavioral studies and all right you can see the and also micro dosing studies you can see so computer computer uh, computerized patent drug based so these things 
you will get lot of information where the animals which are not used right so you can see the side effects of the drugs by using computer technology right so and also clinical observation of the patient, patients so which are already using so based on their observations also we can draw some sort of data where so which, which drugs and what is the effects elicited by those drugs right so based on that you can have some information and omit those studies if you are trying to repeat on the things and in silico methods so right now it is booming area uh, i think uh, uh, medical chemists uh, mainly so who are into this particular area computer models computer aided drug design so docking simulation models so we have schrodinger we have a uh, drug discovery studio so just uh, without go getting into the lab so we can get lot of data by using this in silico methods right so prediction methods also qsar modeling tools so molecular modeling all these things are there in the in silico methods by using the uh, computer aided drug design uh, softwares so right so other than that uh, you can also see non invasive imaging non invasive I ivis so uh, non invasive imaging techniques also there so by just uh, uh, putting the animal in this in that particular system you go, so you can see the physiology you can see the lot of uh, data you, you can collect based on this right and uh, smaller vertebrates you can see drosophila fruit fly c elegans and zebra fish so these things i think cpc also is very clear if you can use this also uh, ethical clearance may not be required so i don't know in future how the guidelines might be so drosophila and zebra fish uh, laboratories are there in india so for many of the studies so we, we can use these uh, models as a replacement of the higher animals right and in education also we can see uh, uh, we can show the students the computerized dissection things by using the audio visual uh, uh, methodologies right we have x pharma i think we have we are all using x pharma and we are all using uh, different uh, things right then the next uh, thing is moocs right i think uh, if it works so right now uh, scientists are working on this but if it works it will be a breakthrough in uh, shifting our research area from the animal testing to the alternative structure that is multi organs on a chip so this area i think in cftri some people are working i think this slide is taken from the uh, colleague from the uh, cftri which is in mysore so where they are trying to develop some chips so by just uh, uh, studying their function of that particular organ for example if you can see here contractility and conduction so based on the signals right immune response they have heart chips lung chip bone chip kidney chip right so based on that particular thing so uh, it is not completely into this but uh, research is going on on this so if this can be uh, achieved so it will be a breakthrough method in shifting from preclinical to sorry animal testing to the alternatives to and such and also alternative training methods for training also we will you see nowadays and now uh, for b farm students there is no uh, animal experiments so, but previously when we were studying it was there so now uh, for m farm students the animal studies are there so uh, instead of that so there are interactive computer simulations digital surgery programs can be done <coughs> animal cadavers can be obtained from medical sources 3d uh, control uh, uh, realistic images can be shown so just by uh, stretching and uh, zooming in everything and also these things are also can be obtained right so this is one of the animal uh, virtual animal lab of experiments right so i think um, power lab uh, ad instruments these people are working a lot uh, in bringing out the uh, simulation models right so again alternative methods we have challenges again non animal methods uh, still needs to be further developed validated expected and implemented of course alternatives are developing as i told you moocs are developing but the thing is what is the validation of that because whatever the conduction is there whatever whatever the contraction function is there whether it is clearly reproducible on those particular chips or not these things has to be focused and uh, the at that particular time so whenever uh, it has it will take a lot of time to accept uh, so before it get validated right so lack of focus on the research in alternatives yes so uh, as we see we feel that animal studies are superior being a pharmacologist i also feel animal studies are superior
but the thing is uh, somewhere we are missing so we are not concentrating on the alternatives uh, which are available right right now in the last 5 10 years the cell culture cell biology studies and uh, cad studies as uh, taken and long uh, interest a lot of interest from the researches but it has to be uh, amplified more and more and our focus should be more and more on alternatives so what is past so past past is humans animals present is uh, humanized animals zebra fish transgenic what is next generation is human microdosing and organ on a chips that is nothing but the mooks right now what is pros and cons of animal studies right so if you can see here uh, it will contributes definitely will contributes so it is crucial in uh, ensure that vaccines are safe and there is no adequate alternate animals are appropriate to such objects we feel all those things but what are the cons it is cruel yes it is inhumane right so drug that passes animals test not necessarily safe right it may not be necessarily safe animal testings are not reliably predict the uh, results in the human beings so these are all the cons animal welfare act has not succeeded in preventing the horrific cases of animal uh, abuse in research laboratories medical breakthroughs involving animal may still have been without animal study these are the pros and cons based on this uh, i have i think 30 minutes that's what i'm going fast we uh, have to concentrate on alternatives which are available right so we should be very clear on simulation methods we should be very clear on uh, in vitro methods we should be very clear on tissue engineering methods so once it is done so we can so what is alternative merits right so animal free testing may be more accurate so as of now if if at all the model is established alternative then then it is accurate so because it will be in molecular and cellular level right and it will be faster non animal maybe maybe cost effective sometimes because animals and all we need uh, welfare we need to maintain the animal we need to uh, spend some time in animals so, so most it is more laborious right alternative uh, to animal testing is more eco friendly so if you can see so mainly i strongly believe that experiment animals may be eventually replaced with more advanced techniques now the advancement is started right so technologically the lot of advancement is started in the understanding the animal physiology and its uh, uh, progression in the research and research methodologies which are there in the conventional animal models is quite slightly shifting towards this method right so this is how this is the history these are the few people uh, we need to uh remember initiator of the experimental uh, animal research claude bernard and uh, most prominent alternative methods bruce uh, so he is the founder of aims test and uh, burschen and russell established the 3r's concept right so this is my uh, view point on uh, what is animal testing and what is alternative to animal testings and what are the pros and cons and what what animal testing may gives us and what alternatives and how we have to go through with the alternative testing thank you i am really thankful to uh, sir for giving such a wonderful presentation on the animal testing as well as the alternatives to animal testing because this topic is now in trend in pharmacology where we have to replace animals with the tools the tools that are available like we have the software tools which have to replace with some uh, animal models to improve the efficacy because you have already discussed that the alternative animal testing has been more reliable more efficient most cost effective as more predictable as compared to the animal testing so sir has widely elaborated the application part as well as the futuristic role of the alternative animal testing so i am thankful to sir for giving me such a wonderful talk and giving me such a precious time for iscp moga and uh, our coordinator professor siddharth man sir will also he also join in this meeting sir please thank you vijay sir for this wonderful lecture that's a uh, very good afternoon i think good afternoon, you, you may not be knowing personally but i know you personally <laughs> yes sir we are very thankful for your this very special informative lecture in this isf cp dialogue series and we are again thanks to all listeners if you have any query please drop down your message in the youtube and thanks again
I am thankful to Professor Gautman sir, our college director J.V. Gupta sir, Naran Naran sir, as well as Chairman Shri Prabhing Ji for providing opportunity for this platform. Thank you very much sir. Thanks to all. Thank you sir. Thank you so much sir. Recording off kar dete dil pe sir. Yes sir. Dil pe sir.